Snow is coming down in the high country in Boone, North Carolina, but there's warm basketball inside between Appalachian State and Georgia Southern as we welcome you inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Hi, everyone. I'm Kendall Lewis alongside my partner, John Reister, here with you tonight in an old rivalry that dates all the way back to when these two teams were in the Southern Conference, Appalachian State and Georgia Southern. And, John, a pair of one-and-one -one teams in the Sun Belt, Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, both winning their second games in their back-to-back -back series last week. What are the keys tonight in game one between these two? Kendall, we got two outstanding defensive teams. For Georgia Southern, they force 17 turnovers a game. They've got to continue to do that against Appalachian State. They've got to get to the free throw line. They attack the basket constantly, get to the free throw line, get some easy shots. For Appalachian, they got to pack it in. Like I said, Georgia Southern attacks the lane as good as anybody in NCAA basketball. And with Appalachian, they really showed how well they can shoot the three the last game against Troy. And Georgia Southern's allowing 39% on three, so I expect them to make some threes early. Saversoff will jump it up against James Lewis, Jr. App State's in the home whites. They've got the gold letters, gold numbers, gold trim. Georgia Southern's in their navy blues with the white letters and white numbers. And we are underway with Deshaun Parker surveying the floor. One thing you're really going to see uh, from Georgia Southern on the defensive end is they switch every single screen that happens out on the floor. And um, that's something that a lot of teams don't do today. They fight through the screens. They trail on, on the high screens. But they, they choose to switch everything. So Appalachian State can really find some mismatches underneath if they're patient. A turnover by the Mountaineers to start. Georgia Southern motion-based offensive team. They'll run multiple ball screens within their half court offense love to drive this is a team full of slashers john yeah they don't shoot the three ball very well only 29 percent on the season but boy can they get in the lane and boy can they attack the basket and how about the three from eric boone that's a spot where the eagles could really improve only a 27 percent three-point shooting team coming in well he he's also attacks the basket he's got a lot of range on the threes you can see it was well beyond the three-point line and that's a good start for George Southern. Gregory trying to feed it inside of James Lewis from NBA range, and Forrest connects. Forrest coming off the best shooting night that he's had this year against Troy. What was he, five for six from three-point range, Kendall? He was just on fire. Looks like he's going to continue that tonight. Had 21 points in his last outing, 18 of those in the first half. The Mountaineers with a 31-point victory over the Troy Trojans in the second game last week, and after losing 69-56 in the first contest. Good drop off, and the flush from James Lewis, Jr. What a pass by Justin Force and big James Lewis, Jr. finishing with authority. 5-3 start for the Mountaineers. Caden Archie, the junior from Dallas. Lost control, this one tapped around, and the Eagles get it back. And wait a minute, Got a shot, shot clock did not reset, so the officials are going to blow it dead. And I believe they're going to have to reset it back down to 20, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to put it, looks like, at 28. I don't understand that. Usually on a quick turnover like that, they'll reset it to 20. Zach Bryant with the basketball here, the senior from Florida. Georgia Southern, as we mentioned, a team full of slashers. They love to get to the rim. Lots of penetration within their motion-based offense, and this time it's a turnover as Bryant lost it out of bounds. Yeah, the pack line defense that the Mountaineers like to play, it's predicated on a lot of help, you know, staying back off of your man if you're not on your man. They want good ball pressure, but they really want to close the gaps and, and eliminate the penetration, which is really the strength of Georgia Southern you know, which is attacking the basket. So I'm really curious to see how it's going to pan out on the defensive end for the Mountaineers. Trying to feed this one in. And this one going to be a jump ball as Gregory was trying to rip it away. The officials are going to intervene before anything extracurricular happens underneath the basket. And the possession arrow is going to favor the Eagles. Well, John, you talk about the pack line defense that Dustin Kearns has brought to Appalachian State. 
And when you look at this Georgia Southern team, they're a team that plays man-to-man 99% of the time, but they do it very differently. How so? Well, I tell you what they do, uh, the opposite of the pack line, is they like to force you baseline. The pack line, one of their principles is you never give up the baseline. You want to force to the middle of the floor where you have help. Whereas with Georgia Southern, they're doing the opposite. They want you to go baseline, and then they're going to close off the passing lanes and look for steals off of the ball. So it's more of a gambling-type defense, but it's a more aggressive-type defense instead of a control-type defense like the pack line is. McCadden knocks it down from deep, the junior from Rocky Mount. And the Georgia Southern Eagles with a one-point lead and some full-court pressure here as this one was deflected out of bounds. And they mix up their pressure really well in the backcourt, Kendall. They'll, they'll look, show you a man, and they'll run and jump out of it. They'll show a token 1-2-2 on you. Sometimes they'll come at you hard with that also. So they're very crafty defensively. Deshaun Parker trying to create. Picks up his dribble. Shot clock's at 16. He skips it. Delph elevates. Couldn't hit. James Lewis sticking it back in. How about a third try? There's a lid on the rim, but four chances for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers attacking the glass there, Kendall. That was impressive. Four straight offensive rebounds. 7-6, back and forth we go inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Good drop off inside. Zavrasov had it poked away. Gregory in transition, and he was fouled from behind. A little bit of a bailout call there. Donovan Gregory was let out of control on the break, got in deep. Uh, would have liked to have seen him stop at the free throw line and kick it out to the shooter on the wing. Justin Force was wide open on the wing. That's the first team foul of the game. At the 16-27 mark of the first half. Ken Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN Plus tonight. Glad you're tuned in with us from wherever you may be. Only 25 fans allowed in attendance. Of course, those are player allotted tickets. Much different atmosphere in, in college basketball this year, but one thing about it, if you ask these two coaches and the players, they're just glad that there are games to be played. Well, they're excited to be playing, and with all the doubt that was uh, hanging over NCAA basketball after they abruptly you know, stopped the season last year, it's good that they're getting to play. It's tough on the coaches and the players playing back-to-back, -back, but like you said, it's, it's a lot better to be playing than not playing at all. Zach Bryant just surpassed 1,000 points for Georgia Southern. He had 986 of those at UAB, the transfer this year. Brian Berg, the first year head coach, has brought in a ton of transfers, whether from the JUCO level or the Division I level. Off balance shot that time, just missed off the window, and back come the Mountaineers. Approaching immediate timeout here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And I tell you, Kendall, both teams are really getting after it defensively. Delph just misfired on the three. He had a big game last Saturday in the Mountaineers' 31-point victory over Troy. Turnover. Here comes Parker. Finds Gregory in transition, and he lost control. Media timeout. 15-28 left to play. It's 8-6. Mountaineers on top of the Eagles. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Brian Berg, the head coach for the Georgia Southern Eagles in year number one. Spent the last four years as an assistant with Texas Tech, a, a Chris Beard disciple. He was actually with Chris Beard back in the 2015-2016 season on that team that went 30-5, and five, won the Sun Belt Tournament, and then won a game in the NCAA Tournament as well. We're kind of one of the upset stories that year in the NCAA tournament, but he's also been at Campbell and North Carolina Central. A couple of stops along the way for Brian Berg, and you have two really good young head coaches, two great basketball minds working the sidelines for both squads tonight. And here we're seeing something different from the Mountaineers, a little matchup zone. Looks like a 1-3-1 one, one morphed into a 2-3. Good adjustment out of the timeout by Coach Kearns. Best time to change your defense is during a timeout, kind of catch the other coach asleep a little bit and end up in a uh, turnover for the Mountaineers. 
Michael Omanese off the bench, misfired from three. Here's Elijah McCadden. This team likes to get downhill, Georgia Southern. A team full of slashers. They can really beat teams up at the rim. Yeah, I tell you, Kendall, I was reading the scouting report that I got from the Mountaineers coaching staff today, and it looked like attack was used more than any word on that scouting report. All those guys from Georgia Southern could put it on the floor and get to the rim. Oh, Montessi to step back, Jay. That was smooth right there. Michael O'Monesey had 21 points in a game earlier this year against Bowling Green for the Mountaineers. Overtime loss to a team that is now 4-0 in the MAC. And I tell you, he's had a tremendous impact this year as, as a newcomer to this program, a grad transfer, as you mentioned, and uh, more so than anybody else that's new to this roster. Bryant, step back three as the shot clock expires. Wow, that was, a, that was an incredible shot. He got at least five or six feet of separation on that step back. Georgia Southern into their 1-2-2. Two, two. They've shown this a couple of times this year, the 1-2-2 two, two full court pressure. Predominantly a man-to-man -man team, but they apply a ton of ball pressure as Gregory had the shot altered. He'll try to tick, tip it back in and he gets it to go. And I tell you, Coach Berg's got to be disappointed in his team right now. Uh, they're just getting pounded on the offensive boards by the Mountaineers, and, and that's just a, a simple fundamental thing as a coach that you just can't accept when you're getting, you know, giving up second, third, and fourth chance points. Bryant backing his way in on Omanese, the kick out. McCadden thought about it, extra pass, open look, and that one rattles home as well. How about this Georgia Southern team right now with four made threes coming in? They were a 27% three-point shooting team. Well, and, and a lot of that has to do with the Mountaineers are playing pretty soft defensively to keep them out of the lane. They continue to shoot like that. They're going to have to come out and guard them. Delph elevates. He'll answer the bell. Back to a three-point lead for the Mountaineers. These two teams going at it here in the first half so far. Intercepted, Delph on the break. Thunder dunk. Showtime, Adrian Delph. He's got that in his game, Kendall. He's a very explosive leaper. Likes to finish at the rim as you just saw with his left hand. And all of a sudden, Appalachian State has made their last three shots and have stretched this to a five-point lead. Good pass from McCadden inside to McFatton, and he finishes. McKenzie McFatton, his first two points of the contest. Dangerous pass by Forrest. I thought uh, Georgia Southern was going to get that cross-court pass. Omanese bumped out front which is gonna take us to another timeout. 11.28 left to play in the first half. It's back and forth here inside of the Holmes Cavication Center. <laughs> Dustin Kearns in his second season at the helm for Appalachian State. His motto for this program is take the stairs. And he's really done a nice job of changing the culture of the program here in Boone, North Carolina. 18 wins in year one, the most that the Mountaineers have had since the 2009-2010 season. I'll tell you, John, when you look at the facilities that Appalachian State has available to these players, you get that sense that App State is a special place. It can really be a program that can certainly be a mainstay at the top of this league. Well, it's a great place to live. It's a great place to be a student, great university. And they're also building a, a new practice facility for the men's and women's team. They, they found that out about uh, three weeks ago. Uh, there, was, there was a donor, a longtime uh, contributor to the athletic program that uh, uh, brought some uh, funding and I believe they're going to break ground on that this spring. So they're getting a new practice facility, which is only going to make it better. Good save from Eric Boone off the leg of 
C.J. Huntley that time. So Georgia Southern's going to maintain possession here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Take a second look there at the hustle play from Eric Boone, who knocked down a three earlier. Muscling his way inside. That's Prince Toyambi, known as the junkyard dog for this team, Johnny. He's averaging seven points and six rebounds per game in just 14 and a half minutes on average. Well, and I tell you, in, in coaching speak, we call this guy the garbage man. All he does is hang around in the paint. He's leading the team in offensive rebounds, scoring all of his points in the paint. And uh, just the kind of guy that's just hanging around the rim, setting big, strong screens on the perimeter. And when he gets his hands on it around the basket, it's automatic. He's a big physical post player as well. It's 6'7", but 225 pounds. Extremely strong. That's going to be fun inside right now with James Lewis Jr. and Prince Toyambi. Those are two big, strong bodies in there banging on each other. That's going to be interesting to watch. Good take. That's Caden Archie. And that's not going to make Coach Kearns happy. He caught that ball outside the three-point line and two dribbled it to the rim, and nobody stepped in to take a charge and just kind of parted the sea, so to speak. That's not the pack line defense. He's, he's not happy standing over there. Justin Farris, first team ball Sun Belt selection last year. Empty on the three. Here come the Eagles in transition. This is Cam Bryant. Extra pass. Archie's going to pull it back. Skip across. Savrasov, he can shoot the three. Offensive board from Toyambi. Attacking, dropping it off. Toyambi going up strong and drawing the contact. Yeah, the Mountaineers are getting a little sloppy on defense. They're, they're coming out of their stance. They're doing a lot of ball watching off the ball instead of closing down the gaps in their defense. And if that continues, uh, that's going to be to Georgia Southern's advantage. You can see they're getting to the free throw line now. Pretty good free throw shooting team, 65% on the year. So uh, anytime you can score with the clock stopped and you're a penetrating team, that's exactly how you want to play. So we all be rattles in the first free throw. Let's take a second look. Cloud fouled right on the shoulders that time. Just hacked as he was going up, but he is really a productive guy, especially when you look at the analytics for this team of Georgia Southern. Told you 6.7 6 points per game, six rebounds a game. In He's only 14 averaging minutes. 14 and a half minutes. Now I'm curious to see what happens with this. Are they gonna run and jump out of it or is, is it just gonna be a token press? It looks like they're bringing some pressure. Lazy pass taken away, and Savrasov going to flush it home. You can feel the tone turning in Georgia Southern's direction, and it's, it's come from their defense. They've really turned it up on the defensive end. Parker slicing, drawing the foul. So Deshaun Parker will have two free throws coming for the Mountaineers. Sean Parker, the transfer from James Madison. A couple years ago, averaged three assists per contest for the Dukes in the Colonial. Able to make on the first. And just was deemed eligible in the middle of December when the NCAA deemed all transfers eligible this season. Dustin Kearns and the coaching staff extremely excited about that. 22-19, three-point lead for Georgia Southern. And this one thrown, or excuse me, tapped out of bounds. They say it was touched by the Mountaineers. Yeah, it looked like the Mountaineers defender reached, reached around from behind when Bryant got around him. That's a tough place to bring the ball in from there. App State coming off their best game of the year last Saturday. 
Talk about a 44-point swing from Friday night to Saturday against the same opponent in Troy. You bet. Once again from deep is Eric Boone. That's his second made triple of the contest. And that's five for eight for Georgia Southern on the game. How about a team coming in as a 27% three-point shooting team at 63% right now from three-point land? Well, if you're the Mountaineers, you got to figure they're not going to keep that up. So you just got to be patient and not let it get in your head and just continue to play your game. And a blocking foul is called on Cam Bryant. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Georgia Southern. We'll take another media timeout. 7.54 left to go in the first half. It's 25-19, Eagles on top. Series history for these two teams, 53rd all-time meeting. It's been a good one. They have had some battles. Old Southern Conference rivals are the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Appalachian State Mountaineers. And in fact, they both moved to the Sun Belt in 2014 together. Of course, some very good battles on the gridiron as well between these two. And no love lost between these two programs, that's for sure. No, these guys don't like each other. Let's put it bluntly. <laughs> Let's just throw it out there. <laughs> these schools don't like each other. I, I'm an alumni of Appalachian State, Kendall, and I got something uh, – from the girls' basketball program a couple weeks ago, they were getting ready to play Georgia Southern. And they, no, actually, it was the Georgia Southern football game. And uh, they uh, were, were trying to do a fundraiser uh, for some reason or another for the Georgia Southern uh, football game. And uh, it was, I don't, can't remember exactly what it was about, but yeah, these teams don't like each other at all. It's, it's a huge rivalry. Kick out. McCadden thought about it. He had it swatted away by James Lewis. And back come the Mountaineers. It's a big possession for the Mountaineers. They've been quiet for the last two or three minutes, Kendall, and Eagles have jumped out to this five-point lead. They need to get a good shot here. Our officials, Brian Shea, Zelton Steed, and Raymond Steins the third. Good officiating crew here in Boone tonight. Five-point Georgia Southern lead. That's no made buckets in almost five minutes for the Mountaineers. Zach Bryant couldn't connect. And the Mountaineers trying to end this drought right now. That's been kind of an Achilles heel a little bit this year for Appalachian State, John. They've had some games where they've had some long scoring droughts. Yeah, they've really struggled in the half court up until their second game against Troy. And, and then they were hitting on all cylinders, the three-point shot really opened things up for them and, and then James Lewis Jr. took over down in the paint. Uh, they tend to be struggling, They're getting back into some bad habits, shooting quick, you know, not uh, getting the ball inside out and Georgia Southern's taking advantage of it. Extra pass, long from Saversaw. There's a sophomore from Russia, he can shoot that three. Gregory attacking and drawing the foul. Pretty good defense by Caden Archie there. Just brought his hands down at the last minute. Uh, officials are going to call that every time, but he did a great job of playing with his feet and, and cutting off the lane of the basket. So Donovan Gregory at the free throw line for the Mountaineers. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the year. Gets to the line a ton. In fact, He's gotten to the line more than anyone else on this Appalachian State roster this year. And for an undersized post player, Donovan really is good at, at drawing contact, and he's still strong enough to get the ball up, and, and he's had a lot of three-point play opportunities. Uh, does a great job of, of shooting free throws. Had a bad game against Troy the first go-round. I think he missed three or four towards the end of the game, but he was right back out here. You know, within two or three minutes after the game, he went in, changed uniform, came out and started shooting free throws. So he's a hardworking kid and uh, just a lot of potential, bright future for him down the line with the Mountaineers. R.J. Duhart's in the game for the Mountaineers for the first time tonight. Mountaineers showing a little 2-3 zone. 
Getty Uzapiatis is back in for Georgia Southern. He hit an open three earlier for the Eagles. Bryant had it poked out of his hands from behind. And Georgia Southern will have it along the baseline here with 5.33 left to play in the first half. And Zach Bryant is lightning quick. He, he got in the middle of that zone in a blink of an eye. He's super athletic. Five seconds on the shot clock, so no time. Maybe a dribble and a pass, and that's about it. They'll feed this one inside, and there's a foul on R.J. Duhart underneath the basket. Yeah, he got pinned off of that screen. And um, made it really easy for the official to make that call. You can't get caught that close to the basket behind the offensive player. Fresh 20 on the shot clock at Georgia Southern. Going to hit the reset button with Zach Bryant kicking it. Use the Pietis. That time missed everything. Open look. McCadden could knock it down. This one tipped right back to Toyambi, who was fouled. And that will make Dustin Kearns upset. Nobody boxing out. Well, a little fundamental mistake by Donovan Gregory. Went up with one hand and, and tapped it away from his teammate, and it just went straight to Georgia Southern. And he got an opportunity to get that. I see right there, you got to go up. Young players, you got to go up with two hands. That's just one of the fundamental things of being a rebounder. And you bring that down, and you're off to the races. But if you go up with one hand, a lot of times it'll end up back in the offense's hands. And Toyambi knocks down the first free throw. Toyambi, just a 41% free throw shooter coming in. He hasn't gotten to the line a ton this year, but he is a big rebounder. This Georgia Southern team, very good on the offensive glass. In fact, they rank second in the Sun Belt in offensive rebounds. 14 a game. That's a lot of offensive rebounds. A little bit undersized compared to the rest of the Sun Belt, John. It, that's a, a, a big stat that can make up for being undersized as the offensive glass. Gregory was blocked, then lost control. Here comes Zach Bryant. Nice spin. Gets away from trouble. Good ball movement for the Eagles. Use a Pietus from deep. You bet. He hits it again. And he hasn't played much for them, only played in the last three games. But, boy, he's sure making an impact tonight. A little bit of a nice surprise for Brian Berg's crew tonight. Six made threes in the first half for Georgia Southern. And Duhart couldn't hit the turnaround. Yeah, Mountaineers have been one and out the last two or three times down the floor, Kendall, after just destroying Georgia Southern on the offensive glass early. Big rebound from Toyambi, and he draws another foul. And Georgia Southern with all the momentum right now here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. It's 30 to 21. We'll be right back with the rest of the first half here on ESPN Plus. Appalachian State, oh of their last eight shots, and they've only had one made field goal in over eight minutes of the half. That's a big difference in this ball game right now. Georgia Southern really done a nice job defensively here in the first half. Brian Berg's crew really getting after it. They're really getting after it. You're right, Ken, and they're being aggressive on both ends, both offensively and defensively. And the Mountaineers seem to be a half a step behind on both ends. They've got, they've got to wake up before this game gets away from them. Foul was called on the floor before the timeout. Into the paint, this is Eric Boone, and he gets it to drop. And Georgia Southern gonna set right back up into their full court pressure. And this I like the fact that he's still being aggressive. He's coming after him, and you know, he wants, he don't wanna let him off the hook and get him back in this ball game. Good move by Coach Berg. Almodice controls the rock. Justin Forrest looking to attack baseline. James Lewis, up strong, bucket and the foul. And I tell you, that's exactly what I was hoping that Coach Kearns would draw up on the sidelines. You know, the biggest kid that they have for Georgia Southern is Toyambi, 
and he's 6'7", 235, and James Lewis Jr.'s got a couple inches and some pounds on him. They need to feed the big fella underneath because he's proven he can score, and um, in, until they can stop him, they need to just continue to pound the ball inside, and that's just going to open everything else up. James Lewis Jr., can he complete the three-point play? He does. That's one part of his game that's really improved. Almost 80% from the charity stripe is the big fella James Lewis Jr. this year for the Mountaineers. Extra pass, and this one was deflected out of bounds. And it looked like the Mountaineers were in a 3-2 a, a zone that time. You know, this is more zone than we've seen the Mountaineers play all year. And um, I think it's an adjustment that Coach Kearns has, you know, they had a week to prepare for this game. It's nice to put in a wrinkle or two when you have the time and, you know, these games are back-to-back. -back, so whatever you're going to put in, you have to do during the week. But uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised that they're getting away from their man-to-man -man defense. Well, with COVID altering everything this year across – the college basketball landscape, especially, John, you know, when you have guys that are out due to contact tracing or maybe missing a couple of games, how does that affect your practice plan as well in, in, in terms of what can you install? Because you might not have everybody there at most of these practices. Well, most teams have been lucky so far that, that they, I know with the Mountaineers, they haven't, they haven't had anybody test positive and they, they only had one, uh, stoppage of practice and I believe that might have even been in the preseason uh, but you know you just got to be flexible and hopefully you have the depth as a team to to compensate losing a player or two along the way and Cam Bryant from Zach Bryant for the deuce and it's a 10-point Eagles lead good find up the floor James Lewis again That's, Second and one opportunity for the big man. Boy, that's a tough pass out of that double team. Good left-handed finish by James Lewis Jr. So a chance to trim the deficit to seven right here. This is a big free throw. It'll also give him an opportunity to get into the pressure that they got in the last time Lewis was at the line. And the officials are going to go to the table for this one. They're going to take a a look. What are they looking? What are they looking for? If to see if there was any sort of flagrant involved in the foul on James Lewis. I think this is just going to be a common foul, just at first glance. We'll see I, if we I get didn't, a second yeah, look. Yeah, here, here we go. We'll get a look at. It. I didn't see anything live either, Kendall. No, I mean, he reached out and tried to grab him on the arm, but I didn't see anything flagrant about that. Foul was on Getty Uzapiatis. That was Georgia Southern's eighth. But how about James Lewis Jr. really trying to spark this Mountaineers team? A couple of and ones in the last two minutes. He's got another chance to complete a three-point play. And we're already getting right back to this. Yeah, there was no contact in the head head area. I think that's probably what they were looking for, uh, making sure that none of that took place. So James Lewis will have an opportunity to complete the three-point play here. Just a common foul. I'd like to see the Mountaineers get in the pressure, make or miss. You know, a lot of times the best time to press is on a miss because the other team doesn't have a chance to get in their press attack. Seven point Georgia Southern lead. McCadden works it over to Boone. And that one was in and out. There's a foul away from the basketball against the Eagles. And that's going to be the team foul number nine on Georgia Southern here in the first half. So App State in the one and one. And James Lewis Jr. right back to the free throw line again. And these are big. This could cut the lead. This could cut the lead down to five. And, and slowly the Mountaineers are creeping back into this thing right before halftime.
Here's James Lewis again. Third trip to the charity stripe in the first half. And Brian Berg screaming at his unit here, slow it down. He says, hey, let's get the pace back in this game. They've led by as many as 10 in the first half. Good look for Boone. And James Lewis Jr. is able to clean the glass once again. And this might be the most effective offensive lineup for the Mountaineers they have on the floor right now. Two good shooters with Forrest and Delph, and Al Montesi's a good shooter himself. Just force it inside to Lewis. And Al Montesi turns it over. McCadden, Cam Bryant trying to get downhill. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Just over a minute and a half left to play in the first half inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Cam Bryant for three. Another one for the Eagles. Georgia Southern, seven of 17 from three-point land in the first half. And a whistle, this is gonna go against Appalachian State. An offensive foul. Yeah, I think they're calling Donovan Gregor for Gregory yeah. for clearing out underneath was the indication from the official. Away from the basketball that time. Zelton Steed's a veteran official. He's, he's called ACC games, NCAA tournament games. Really quality guy along with being a quality official. He doesn't miss many. Veteran officiating crew here tonight as we told you. These guys, as John just mentioned, they've done bigger games in terms of power five type games. They've even done some championship stuff as well. Here's the kick out, Bryant, and he missed from three. Good look up the floor, C.J. Huntley nice throws pass. it down. Nice pass, Huntley, big tall, long freshman, 6'10 out of Huntersville, North Carolina. Good hands for a big fella running the floor. Shot fake that time from Saversoff. Nice spin down the alley and the bucket. Caden Archie. I tell you what, that was impressive. That was impressive. Justin Flores couldn't have done a better job of staying in front of him, moving his feet. But at 6'6, he was just too he was just too big and strong once he got down into the lane. So Caden Archie, the transfer from UTEP, who started his college career at TCU, left it short to try uh, at a chance to try and complete the three-point play. And App State wants a timeout. Six seconds left in the first half. John, what do you think Dustin Kearns is going to draw up here inside of the huddle? Well, you got to get something going towards your basket. You got two or three dribbles. Six seconds is a long time. But you want to get you want to get your momentum going towards the basket and and catch it, get two or three dribbles, look up for a three, or or get to the get to the three point line yourself and get a shot. It's not hard to get a shot with six seconds. If I were Georgia Southern though, what I would do is I'd come with their uh, one two two or a one three one, because you can't dribble through that. And you can get a good trap and stop that ball handler from from getting out and, and getting that shot in transition. Plenty of time with six seconds for the Mountaineers to get it into the front court and get the shot they're looking for. What does Georgia Southern do defensively? We'll find out. Again, that full court pressure had kind of disrupted the Mountaineers, and especially in their half court offense a little bit here in the first half. And now Georgia Southern just gets a look at how App State lined up on the floor. So now Brian Berg's going to call timeout. Well, I tell you, this would – being that they've got that uh, run and jump out of their man-to-man -man pressure, full court pressure, this would be a great time to throw that out. Uh, run somebody at the ball handler uh, and get in the passing lanes. You could possibly get a steal and get a quick three on the offensive end. Well, Georgia Southern, they've got a good one in Brian Berg. Mark Byington went to James Madison, the former head coach. And Brian Berg, as we told you, spent so much time with Chris Beard 
and Texas Tech. Forrest, the floater at the horn, and he just missed it short. So the first half comes to a close with Georgia Southern matching their largest lead of the half at 10, 39-29. We'll be back to recap the first half stats and numbers, show you some highlights from these two teams as well on the other side of the break here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. We've got a good one. Second half should be interesting. Stay with us. Thirty-nine, twenty-nine. the halftime score here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center from Boone, North Carolina. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN+. Plus. And let's take a look at the first half stats and numbers from these two teams. And hey, what, John, Georgia Southern with a bit of a surprise in the first half, shooting 39% from three-point land. They were 7 of 18 from three. That's been a struggle for the Eagles all year long. Coming in is only a 27% three-point shooting. Well, what it does is it, it makes the Mountaineers, you know, look at themselves and say, well, hold on a second. We're supposed to be clogging passing lanes, sagging that back into the paint. And I believe they made five out of their first seven. So it, it just changes the whole dynamic of the game. It changes the mindset defensively for the Mountaineers. And uh, it gave Georgia Southern all kinds of momentum. App State with the nine turnovers in the first half, but the Mountaineers really didn't play that bad in the first half. Of course, Georgia Southern was just on fire, as we told you, from three there. And give Brian Berg's credit. They really, his crew really got after it defensively there, enforcing those turnovers. This is a very disruptive team with their man-to-man -man pressure. They've got a lot of length, Kendall. They, they play anywhere from 6'5 to 6'7 on the perimeter with the exception of Zach Bryant. So they've got a lot of length. They get it, they're active, they're in the passing lanes. Uh, I gotta give the Mountaineers a little credit. You know, they've hung in there. They're only 10 down, despite the fact that, you know, Georgia Southern has shot the lights out from three. So they weathered the storm, could have got away, the game could have got away from them a little bit early, but they battled back, they cut it down to five, and uh, it's back up to 10. But, you know, if I'm Dustin Kearns, I'm feeling okay because they haven't played all that bad. 48% from the field were the Georgia Southern Eagles. And Appalachian State had a couple of scoring droughts, one that went over six minutes, the other one over two minutes. Over the course of an eight-minute span, they made one basket in those eight minutes. It was really kind of a tough period for the Mountaineers, and Georgia Southern was able to create that separation at that point of the contest. Yeah, they got away from themselves a little bit, the Mountaineers, and, and you know, they had established James Lewis Jr. into the paint, and then they went back away from him, and, and you got to give Georgia Southern credit. Like you said, defensively, they're really playing hard. They're being disruptive. They're being aggressive in the lane and in the passing lanes, and, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a slugfest. I mean, these teams know each other inside and out, and they've had a week to prepare, so... The sloppiness of the game doesn't surprise me uh, that much. What I'm curious to see is what they do at halftime, the adjustments that they make. And uh, you got two good young coaches here, so there's going to be some adjustments. I'm looking forward to the second half. It's 39-29. Highlights are coming up and more here at halftime from Boone to the ears. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN+. Plus. And let's take a look at the highlights from these two teams there in the first half. And there were plenty to go around. Georgia Southern, red hot from the outside, making five of their first seven three-point attempts, John. Well, and there's five different guys that made a three in the first half, Kendall. So it's not just one guy getting red hot. They're spreading the wealth around. And, um, you know, this goes against the scouting report. 29% as a team coming into this game. So... Yeah, they're on fire. The question is, can they continue to do it in the second half? And the Eagles able to stretch their lead out to 10. They're to end the first half of really getting contributions from a multitude of different guys. Eight points from Eric Boone there in the first half as well. And Elijah McCadden, who was a preseason all Sun Belt selection, only three points there in the first half. The, the Eagles might feel like they left some points on the table there as well. Yeah, and then you got James Lewis Jr. for the Mountaineers. He's on his way to a double-double. The big fella's playing strong inside, getting to the free throw line. Would really like to see the Mountaineers go into him early in the second half, continue that trend, uh, pound the ball inside. That's just going to open everything else up for him. So, 
James, like I said, James Lewis Jr. had an outstanding first half. Oh, yeah, 11 points, six rebounds for the big man for Appalachian State. Can the Mountaineers make the adjustments and come away with a victory? Everyone in the Sun Belt East is one and one. So these two looking to go two and one in the conference standings. We'll be back to recap more. The second half is right after these messages. Tightly contested Sunbelt Conference this year with Georgia Southern leading App State here in the first of two games this weekend, 39-29 as we come back to you. Take a look at the standings here. Everybody on the Sunbelt East went one and one last weekend. In fact, these two teams, Appalachian State winning their second game against Troy and Georgia Southern winning their second game against South Alabama last Saturday. So this is really a pivotal weekend for teams on this side of the conference job because if you go 2-0 and this weekend, really can put yourself out in front. That could put you two games up. And, um, you know, the way the balance has always been in the Sun Belt, you know, if you can go on a, a, a two-game spurt or even a four-game spurt, that's really going to put you in a, in, a, in a very good position at the top of, of the East Division. And... Um, I don't know how easy that's going to be, though, Kendall, because there's so much balance and uh, there's so much uncertainty with the back-to-backs. I think the back-to-backs is what's created uh, almost an equalizer uh, with some of the teams with a little bit of talent disparity. But like tonight, you've got Georgia Southern. They played 11 guys already. Appalachians only played eight. So what is that? how does that affect tomorrow from a fatigue standpoint when you've only got the 24-hour turnover? That's a good question. We were kind of touching on that last weekend as well. The Sun Belt, one of a few conferences doing the back-to-backs. Of course, there's still some that are doing the traditional Thursday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Saturday. Ten-point Georgia Southern lead as we start the second half. Adrian Delph trying to back his way inside. He'll pull it back away. What type of adjustments might we see from Appalachian State here in the second half? Parker attacking, and he had it poked out of his hands. They say it went off his leg. And Georgia Southern basketball. Yeah, a lot of movement by the Mountaineers on offense at possession, but no screens, uh, you know, nothing really happening off of the ball, which kind of put uh, Deshaun Parker, you know, late in the shot clock. He just had to put his head down and go to the basket. I think even if it wouldn't have been knocked away, he would have had a charge call against Deshaun Parker. Probably not the possession that Dustin Kearns wanted to come out of halftime with. Eric Boone, the junior college transfer, had eight points for Georgia Southern in the first half, and they turn it over. Forrest bounces it inside to Delph, and he had it poked away. Active hands on D from the Eagles. And then a foul against Deshaun Parker. Yeah, the Mountaineers already a little bit out of sync, not moving the ball side to side. A little bit of one-on-one -on -one basketball going, and that's not been a recipe for success for them this year. They need to get the ball moving. They need to get some screens off of the ball. And they need to get the ball back inside to James Lewis Jr. He was the only one that was really effective on the offensive end in the first half. Bryant and an offensive foul. And it's against Zach Bryant. They say he lowered the shoulder there. And we're a minute into the second half. A couple of turnovers, nobody scored. John told you at halftime, Georgia Southern has played 11 different players. And an easy jam on the other end for Eric Boone, a guy that is fourth in the Sun Belt with two and a half steals per contest. And that time with the anticipation to turn the defense into offense. Largest lead of the game for Georgia Southern. 
Fares faces up. Sizing up Caden Archie. Gregory. Nice move inside. He had it rejected by Zach Bryant. Boy, what a block by Bryant. Giving up two or three inches to Donovan Gregory. Getting on way on top of the ball. Bryant, nice step through, and the finish. How about the craftiness from Zach Bryant, the senior from Florida? And they're coming with more pressure. I like, I like how um, Coach Berg's working this game. He's just, he's just being relentless. He's not backing off of the Mountaineers at all. James Lewis going up strong, and this one, like pinball, Bounced around and picked back up by Georgia Southern. Boone attacking downhill. He'll drop it off and another deuce from McCadden that time. That's a 6-0 run to start the second half for the Eagles. And Dustin Kearns wants a timeout. 17-13 left to go in the ball game. Timeout App State. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back here inside of the Holmes Cavication Center. Forty-five twenty-nine, Georgia Southern on a 6-0 run to start the second half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. John, what do the Mountaineers need to do to get back in this game? Well, they need to get the ball inside to James Lewis Jr. and then everything else will take care of itself. And um, They've, they've done a little hero ball. They've been playing a little one-on-one -on, -one on the offensive end. they got to get back to playing together, get the ball inside, and then I think everything will settle down and they'll be okay. Deshaun Parker kicks it back to Forrest. He'll try to create. Nice spin move. Looking to force it into James Lewis. Deflected right back to Adrian Dell. Four on the shot clock. He'll elevate. Grabs his on miss. Second chance opportunity for the Mountaineers. Good job by Adrian Delph being aggressive and staying after that offensive rebound. Big bucket for Appalachian State. And this is a big stop right here. They've, they've got to get a stop and slow the Georgia Southern nice back cut offense down. Inside the Saversov. Forrest going coast to coast that time. And he finishes with the left. Justin Forrest, such a momentum player. When he gets going, look out. Well, they need somebody to get going here on the offensive end. It's going to start on the defensive end, though. They've got to stop. They can't trade buckets when you're down 14 points. Saversoff again. Way off the mark. James Lewis runs the floor, and he was fouled hard. That was a lot of ball up top, but it must have been a lot of body down below. The official was right there on the call. And an official timeout with 15.49 left to play in the ball game. 14 point Georgia Southern lead. Forty-seven, thirty-three. the score, Georgia Southern leading by 14. But how about James Lewis, Jr., working so hard for the Mountaineers today. He's got 11.6 rebounds. All that came in the first half, but the big man running the floor that time and really trying to get the Mountaineers back in this pivotal Sunbelt game in the second weekend of conference play across the board. This could be an opportunity for the Mountaineers to get a little pressure of their own. Maybe catch Georgia Southern. I don't want to say asleep, but off guard a little bit. Well, John, you made a great point a while ago. You, you said what it's going to take for the Mountaineers is it starts on the defensive end and getting stops. And Dustin Kern's teams, they thrive defensively. That's one thing that he instilled in this program when he took the job last year. And this is a good defensive lineup that the Mountaineers have on the floor right now. A lot of quickness and a lot of size inside. Good save from Justin Forrest. And how about that? Defensively, out of the timeout, the Mountaineers able to force a shot clock violation.
take a second look there and the hustle from Donovan Gregory as well. And I believe it was a shot clock violation, was it not, Kendall? It was. That was the correct. That was the signal from the officials. And I'm wondering why there's 20 on the shot clock now if it's Mountaineers ball. Now that was picked up in the backcourt as well by Prince Toyambi. So they're gonna spot this throw in for the Mountaineers underneath their own hoop. Michael Almonese to trigger it in. He'll elevate for three, and he knocks it down. And that's a big three. The Mountaineers have not hit a three this half, and they were really quiet towards the end of the second half. Maybe that'll get them going on the offensive end. They got to keep playing defense, though. They can't trade buckets. So a shot clock violation forced by the Mountaineers, and then a made three out of the timeout. That's exactly what Dustin Kearns wants from his group. Now can Georgia Southern weather the storm? Well, this is huge possession for the Mountaineers here. They got it down to 10. Get a stop here, go down and get another bucket. Might swing the momentum in this game. Bryant, driving baseline. Couldn't get it to go. There's your stop. Now they got to take care of the basketball. Get a good shot. Just over 14 and a half to play. Almonese up high off the window. And all of a sudden, the Georgia Southern lead is down to single digits in what once was a 14-point Eagles lead just a couple of minutes ago. Bryant to the bucket. How about the explosive first step, John? Wow, he's, he's lightning quick. He, he may be the quickest guard in the Sun Belt with the ball in his hands. He's... Just super, super fast. He went around Michael Almonese, and, and I haven't seen anybody get around Almonese all year. Almonese trying to pull it, had it blocked. Now in transition are the Eagles. It's Caden Archie who was fouled on the floor. And Almonese kind of slow to get up. Take yeah, we'll see. Look. He got didn't quite get squared up, didn't get his feet back on the ground. Good call by Zelton Steed. And, and, um, but you know what? You'd rather have that foul than the kid getting to the basket and dunking in transition. Michael Eads checks in for Justin Forrest. First time he's seen action tonight. 11 players have played for Georgia Southern, now nine for the Mountaineers. These two teams will go deep into their benches. And off the glass, Zach Bryant gets it to go. That's an impressive shot over the six foot nine, Duhart. So back up to a 12 point lead for Georgia Southern. CJ Huntley all alone in the corner. And the freshman hits it. Mountaineers starting to heat up a little bit from three. That's what they did in the second half against Troy. We'll see if that continues. Uzapiatis, instead he'll step into the long two and knocks it down again. Six points for Getty Uzapiatis off the bench for Brian Berg's crew tonight. And that's been a nice surprise for the Georgia Southern Eagles. 13.06 left to play in the second half, an 11 point lead for Georgia Southern. We'll keep it right here. You get a look at Dustin Kearns in the huddle with Appalachian State. So the Mountaineers have made five of the last six shots, John, but it seems like Georgia Southern just able to answer the bell every time the Mountaineers make a little mini run. Well, about the time the Mountaineers cut it down to, you know, seven points, you, you turn around and the Eagles knock down a three. They get to the free throw line, score with the clock stopped, and uh, you've got to have sustained stops to cut back into this lead. And I will say the Mountaineers are playing better defense. It look, they look a little uh, more relaxed on offense. This game's going to go down to the wire. Michael Almonese, the grad transfer from Southern New Hampshire. Of course, everyone in college basketball getting this year back as well. 
And Michael Eads able to get around, use a Pietis. He was bumped. It's going to be team foul number three against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Eads, spin cycle, count it, and the foul. Good call. Looked like a little bit of a flop from the Georgia Southern player. Maybe had a foot inside the restricted area. No, he was well outside the area. He just got there a little bit late. Good spin boot by Michael Eads. Haven't seen that from him this year. Freshman was an all-state selection from Edgewater High School in the Orlando area. Really known as a prolific three-point shooter coming out of high school. Battled an injury his senior year. Didn't play, I don't think, maybe one or two games. And um, they're getting some good minutes out of him tonight. Grant Weatherford's in the game for Georgia Southern. The transfer from IUPUI. Off balance is Cam Bryant. Couldn't get it to go. This one tied up. Jump ball. Arrow's going to keep it on this end with the Eagles. But Georgia Southern, only two attempted threes here in the second half at almost eight minutes of play, John. They hit seven triples in the first half. Well, and I really like that from Brian Berg, the you know, head coach of Georgia Southern. You know, the easiest thing to do would have been to come out and say, hey, you know, we're on fire from three and just keep shooting them. But he knows they're not a great three-point shooting team, and he knows those, those percentages are going to come back down uh, to what's more realistic for them as a team. So the fact that they're pounding the ball inside and attacking aggressively to the basket is just, it's just really good strategy from a young head coach. Man, it's an air ball in the first free throw from Prince Toyambi. Mentioned he struggled at the line this year, but just does so many great things for this Georgia Southern team. And he's a young kid. He needs to really work on those free throws because as physical and strong as he is, he's going to get to the line a lot. Eads saved it right back to Delph was dangerous, but then a foul against Georgia Southern, so it all works out for the Mountaineers. Yeah, just a little, little. They tried to, I think Georgia Southern tried to get a trap on Delph, and they just got there a little late, and they reached a little bit. Now they're going to show a little man-to-man -man pressure, which is not a good move. you got Almonese is really the only primary ball handler that's out on the floor for the Mountaineers right now. Georgia Southern coming with the full court man-to-man -man look now. Again, they mix it up defensively. We saw the 1-2-2 two, two look in the first half. Delph sizing up Toyambi. He'll step back on the three. Good box out by Boone on the backside. And bumped was Boone, no whistle. Zapiatis back over Bryant. Off the mark on the three, but a big rebound by Prince Toyambi. Back up strong, and Huntley wow. able to take it away. With a two-handed block, just ripped it away from him. Eads thought about it. He'll pull up, and Weatherford with the rebound. Couple freshmen out there for the Mountaineers. Getting some good minutes tonight. Bryant. Nice pass inside and Toyambi with authority. Able to jam it home. Just a breakdown defensively that time for the Mountaineers. Yeah, somebody lost their man. They tried to extend out a little bit and, and uh, someone lost track of who they were supposed to have. Mental mistake.
James Lewis Jr. Backing his way in on Toyambi. Kicks it back out. Six on the shot clock. And the foul. Going to go against Georgia Southern. It may be on the floor. We'll find out after this media timeout. 10-16 left to play in the ball game. It's Georgia Southern by, two, by 10. Georgia Southern 7-1 when leading at the half this year. Ryan Berg, very good head coach. The Georgia Southern Eagles are certainly have, happy to have on the sidelines. He's going to build this program into a team that I think is going to be a mainstay at the top of this conference in a matter of time. Adrian Delph was fouled right before the timeout. And there was some confusion about whether or not he was in the act of shooting or not. And he makes both free throws, and it's now an eight-point game. Stepping through. Jump ball. It's a jump ball. Good tee from Donovan Gregory. This is going to go back to the Mountaineers. Wow. Wow. Nice defense by Donovan Gregory. Stayed square. Georgia Southern player brought it right across his chest. He just reached out and grabbed it. That takes a lot of strength, and that takes a lot of quick quickness to pull that off. Eric Boone pressuring Deshaun Parker. He's fourth in the conference in swipes per game. Two and a half steals per contest. That's good for ninth in the country. He's one of the better defenders. Not just in this conference, but the country as well. And Parker stepped on the sideline that time. He'll turn it back over. I tell you what, Kendall, Georgia Southern is really good at switching on screens. They just, they just, it's it just seems like it's just in their DNA. They just they just pass players from from you know one guy to the next just seamlessly. And it's really thrown the Mountaineers off. Archie surveys the floor. Seven on the shot clock. Boone crosses over, gets inside. McCadden will rise for three and sticks it. Yeah, the Mountaineers went over to double. I don't understand why they did that. It just left him wide open for that three late in the shot clock. Only three points in the first half for Elijah McCadden. He's got eight for the night. Both these teams trying to move to two and one in the Sunbelt Conference. Here comes the double team inside on James Lewis. Nowhere to go, nearly threw it away. Forrest has an open look. And he knocks it down. They had to have that shot. They had to have that shot. They had worked way too hard on that possession to not get a bucket. That was big. Got it back down to eight. They haven't been below eight in the entire second half. McCadden again. Trying to make it two in a row, and this is going to go back to the Mountaineers. Nice box out by James Lewis, Jr. And he's limping a little bit, Ken. I don't know if he's cramping or if he twisted an ankle. Looks like it's more of a cramp. C.J. Huntley in. Big 6'10 freshman. They've gotten good minutes out of him tonight, Kendall. Deshaun Parker gets it into the front court. Eight minutes to go from Boone, North Carolina. Delph finds a cutting, Donovan Gregory. Excellent cut. And the tip back. Excellent cut, excellent pass. And it's a six point game, as close as it's been since the midway point of the first half. Here's a set we haven't seen from Georgia Southern 
tonight a high one four look. You got to watch the back door. You got to watch the guy screen, slipping screens, slipping to the basket behind you for Shot an easy clock bucket. At six and Gregory called for the bump. That's going to be his third. Team foul number four against the Mountaineers. So 7.20 left to go in the ball game. It's 58-52. Georgia Southern trying to hang on for the victory. Whoa, Susan. Oh. First year head coach Brian Berg installed a system when he took this job at Georgia Southern. And their goal is for these seven things to happen, they want to keep their turnovers less than 10, shoot at least 50% from the field, shoot at least 40% from three-point land, 75% from the free throw line, a two to one assist to turnover ratio, and they want to out-rebound their opponent by at least plus six on the glass, hold their opponents to 39% shooting or less. And they've not had all seven of those occur in one game, but they have had four of those seven occur in one contest this year. They are two and zero oh when they meet four of those goals or more. And they're five and four when they meet less than four of those goals. So there are some really good analytics to what Brian Berg has installed in that system and their recipe for success. Good takeaway by Donovan Gregory. Big possession here for the Mountaineers. All modesty to cut it to three. And this is going to stay with the Mountaineers. Nice effort by Donovan Gregory to get up there and knock the ball off of a Georgia Southern rebounder, giving the Mountaineers another chance here under their own basket. Under seven left to play here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. A three or a two here is going to bring the Mountaineers as close as they've been since early in the first half. Parker driving in, muscling his way up, and this one tapped out to the Eagles. Georgia Southern just one made three in the second half. Shot fake for Bryant. He'll kick McCadden from distance. This one tipped right back to Prince Toyambi. And App State wanted an over the back that they thought that time it was tipped from behind and Archie reached over the top there. Yeah, I, I agree with the Mountaineers bench on that one. I thought Almonacy had the Georgia Southern player on his back. Officials might have missed one. Forrest, the floater, and it's cash money. We're hitting the five minute mark here. Some, something's got to happen for the Mountaineers. You got to get a couple stops. You got to get a couple more buckets. You got a point now where you can't just keep trading baskets. Down by as many as 14 in the second half. Parker, strong rebound. And up the floor to Almonacy. Got forced in the corner. Able to double clutch his way down the lane amongst the trees and finish. We've got a ball game here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Got to keep playing defense. That's what's gotten you here. That's what's gotten you back in the ball game. You got to continue to play with your feet and then finish it with a rebound. Mitch at Georgia Southern's going ice cold from three. Shot clock's at four. Muscling his way to the 10, the stick back, it's Toyambi. Prince Toy Ambi all over the floor for Georgia Southern. And he made some timely plays in the first half, and he just came through again. That's a huge offensive rebound and put back. Almonacy's wide open. We've got a three-point game. Good timeout by Dustin Kearns. Stopping the clock, keeping the momentum on the Mountaineers' side. Give Coach Berg something to talk about in this timeout. 4.23 left to go. We'll be back with the finish from Boone right after this. 
Michael Almonese with 12 big wins tonight. 12 points on five of 10 shooting. He's played 25 minutes for Dustin Kearns tonight. A couple of made threes and one just a moment ago, no bigger than any other three we've seen tonight, but a timely three it was much needed by the Mountaineers. And Michael Almonese just does so many great things for Dustin Kearns. That three just a moment ago couldn't have come at a bigger moment to trim this Mountaineers deficit down to three. Mentioned they've trailed by as many as 14 in the second half. That's the fifth team foul against App State. Georgia Southern, four of seven from the free throw line tonight. They're not known as a good free throw shooting team, and that's something that has to improve for Brian Berg's crew as they work their way down the Sun Belt schedule. And yeah, Mountaineers got to be careful here, get a good box out on this. Don't give them a second chance. And I still have not seen the run and jump from Georgia Southern tonight out of their man press. That's still something they've got in their pocket that they could use at a, a critical time going down the stretch. Parker slicing in, he was blocked. And this is gonna stay with the Mountaineers. And I tell you, Saversov's a sneaky shot blocker. He's not real big at 6'7", but I tell you, I was watching film of him of last weekend and he had three crucial blocks down the stretch for them in the second game last weekend. So he's, he's very capable as a shot blocker. Into James Lewis Jr. Good to see him back on the floor. He kind of hobbled off a while ago. Forrest couldn't get the floater to go and a big rebound for Elijah McCadden. Sizing up Parker, he'll swing it back over. Shot fake that time from Uzapiatis. Good closeout by C.J. Huntley at 6'10". And an offensive foul. A push off on Elijah McCadden. And that's a good call, he threw the arm out, we'll see it here. You, can't, you cannot use that forearm in that way anymore. They're, they're gonna call that every time. A Little bit of acting job by Deshaun Parker, but Good call by the official all the way around. And this is a big possession for the Mountaineers here. Got it down to four. You don't need a three in this situation. You just need a good shot. Two or a three will work. This would slip through to Gregory inside. It's a two point game. And the Mountaineers have climbed back into this one from down 14. And a whistle and a foul against Appalachian State. That's going to go against Justin Forrest. That's going to be team foul number six against the Mountaineers. Yeah, that was kind of a nickel and a dimer right there. But, you know, Delton Steve was right there in front of him. He had to call that. And, um, you know, both teams are going to be very aggressive going down the stretch here defensively. Just one made three, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, for Georgia Southern. They hit seven in the first half, only one in the second half. And James Lewis rejects it from Saversaw. Take a second look there. James Lewis, Jr. 12.6 rebounds, a couple of blocks. Shot clock's at eight. This is where they try to go one-on-one -on, -one on isolation. And a travel. Caden Archie turns it over. Once again, great feet by Donovan Gregory, just staying square and chesting up. Forcing that walk. Look at his feet, Ken. Look how quick he is at 6'5". Excellent job out on the perimeter for a post player. And how about the intensity on the defensive end for Dustin Kearns' group over the last eight minutes? And Almonese traveled. Hmm, I didn't see that one. Looked like he held his pivot foot to me. 
That's a tough call. Here, we'll, get, we'll get a look here. at it here. Yep, that's a good call. He walked. He shuffled both of them. Eric Boone getting downhill. Finds a cutting McCadden. Good, good ball movement that time. McCadden trying to slip inside again. Now seven on the shot clock. And a foul as Archie came slicing down the paint. And that's number seven on the Mountaineers here in the second half. And I like that foul on Justin Force. I mean, he, you either give up a layup or you send a 60% free throw shooter to the line. I'll live with the guy shooting the free throws here. Um, not a bad foul by Justin Force. One and one for Caden Archie. Both teams in the bonus, 17 fouls on both squads here in the second half. And Georgia Southern has missed their last three free throws. Hanging on to that two-point lead. Under two minutes to play inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And we are tied thanks to Michael Almonese. Wow, what a nice left-handed finish by Almonese over the much bigger Georgia Southern player. And the App State bench amped up right now. Georgia Southern on a scoring drought of over two minutes. Shot clock's at nine, just nothing offensively right now for Georgia Southern. And losing it. Now up ahead for the Mountaineers. Forrest to give Huge App State shot. the lead. And McCadden's able to pull down the rebounds. I like that shot. You came in transition, wide open look for your best three point shooter. Nothing wrong with that shot. So a timeout from Brian Berg and the Georgia Southern Eagles. Well, it was Justin Forrest a year ago in this building that hit a last second shot that was actually a Sports Center top 10 nominee to defeat Georgia Southern. And that time just down and out for the Mountaineers, but what a ball game we've had on display tonight. Well, the Mountaineers have clawed their way back into this, Kendall, and it's been on the defensive end and some timely shooting for Michael Almonese. You know, Georgia Southern's going to get a good look at the basket here. You've got to stay square. You've got to keep them out of the lane. Force a three-point shot as much as you don't want to give up one in this situation. Uh, they've cooled off from the three-point line compared to what they shot in the first half. Just keep playing good, strong defense. But you can't forget, you got to finish that defensive stand with a rebound. And especially if uh, they come back out with Prince Toyambi uh, off the bench in this situation, he's just killed them on the offensive glass all night. Three turnovers for the Eagles and a scoring drought of exactly three minutes as well. And the Mountaineers give Dustin Kearns' group credit. They are relentless. Trailed by 10 at halftime and as many as 14 here in the second half. And I like this lineup Coach Kearns is coming back with. He's got scores at every level with this lineup. And um, this team, in, in my opinion, has been their best defensive team out on the floor tonight also. So it's Georgia Southern basketball with 110 left to play. What can the Eagles do offensively, needing a bucket badly? All the momentum in App State's favor. And it's a charge. And there's your senior, Justin Forrest, with the leadership taking the charge on Zach Bryant. That's a huge play, huge play, because we had a wide open three-point shot in the corner coming off that pitch out off the penetration. 54 ticks remaining. Almodesi driving in. He drug his he pivot drug foot the there. Yeah, he was trying to get to the rim again like he had the last two times going on, and, and the Georgia Southern defense was up for it. They did a great job of cutting him off, forcing the turnover. 
13 second differential between game and shot clock. Game clock at 33, shot clock is at 20. And you've got to think that Georgia Southern's going to attack the basket. That pack line's really giving the Eagles problems in the second half. Open look, it was off the heel of the rim that time from Cam Bryant. A good look, and the shot clock is dead now. And a timeout, Dustin Kearns. Oh, boy, is this looking like last year, Kendall, or what? <laughs> Coming down to a last-second possession for the Mountaineers with the score tied. Got to be Justin Forrest that takes this last shot. Doesn't I tell you what, I mean, I like the ball in Michael Almonese's hands. He's done a lot of good things. He's a great free throw shooter. But, yeah, if I'm Coach Kearns, I'm over there drawing something up, bringing uh, Justin Forrest off uh, some screens on the backside just in case Almonese can't get his shot down in the lane. Big James Forrest will be out there to clean up any kind of shot that you take. You want to take a shot with about three seconds or so on the clock, which doesn't allow a whole lot. Uh, to happen for Georgia Southern if they happen to get a defensive rebound. Anything before that, they're going to have an opportunity to call a timeout and set up something and get a last-second shot. Tied at 63 all. First of what will be four regular season meetings between Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, and the Mountaineers will return the trip to Statesboro later this season. Just, just a year like no other. They're not playing anybody off of the West Division of the Sunbelt Conference until you get to the conference tournament. So you're going to get well acquainted with the teams on your side of the of the conference this year, no doubt about it. Well, those, those uh, first two games, you'll get to know each other really, really well. Those second two games, you know, that's those are going to be players' games. As a coach, there's not going to be a whole lot you're going to be able to throw out there. Justin Forrest on your screen will trigger it in. He hit the game winner a year ago in this building against Georgia Southern. He's gonna catch a handoff here. Gregory with nine seconds, a blocking foul. Wow. That's a tough call for Georgia Southern. Eight point six seconds left. I tell you, Kendall, that was the exact same set that they ran last year that's a good call that was the exact same set they ran last year to give Forrest a jump shot at the top of the key the only difference was is Donovan Gregory didn't hand it to Forrest coming out uh, across uh, from uh, the inbounds pass he decided to keep it and Gregory bricks the first Donovan Gregory is a 73 percent free throw shooter well this is the big one here door is open for the Eagles a one-point Mountaineers lead. Seven seconds. And wait a minute, officials clock never blowing stopped. the whistles. The clock, clock never started, I don't think. Or well, you know what, I think they started it started, when the ball went through the net. Started it too early, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. A second and a half went off. Well, that helps the Mountaineers, allows them to set their defense. So who will get an opportunity to deliver the haymaker for Georgia Southern? And well, we'll have to Burns wait a little longer. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little longer and see what they come out with. I don't know how many timeouts Dustin Kearns has left, but he's probably going to get a look at what Coach uh, Berg draws up and then maybe make a second timeout to, to address his defense. Okay, so you had four turnovers in the last 401, and you haven't scored in that 401 either what do you do on this last possession John who do you go to what do you look for here for a bucket well I think you got to put the ball in Zach Bryant's hand he's he's your guy that's the quickest with the ball he's your distributor um, they had two shooters in the corners before they called the timeout you would think they would bring them off some screens either baseline or coming up the three-point line off of uh Zach Bryan's penetration, but the fact that they've had a chance to sit and talk about it, they may have come up, they may come up with something completely different. So 8.6 seconds for the Georgia Southern Eagles to win this ball game. And I tell you, Kendall, the most dangerous guy on the floor right now, if I'm Coach Kearns, is Prince Toyambi. He's in the far corner, and you know he's going to be attacking the offensive glass. Game clock at four. Boone gives it up, the turnaround, no! And the Mountaineers are gonna survive. 
I think they're going to put some more time on the clock. I think Justin Forrest got fouled with about a second on the clock. They're going to take a look at this at the table. The Mountaineers have trailed by as many as 16 points in this game. And this is the first lead they've had in the second half, isn't it, Kendall? That's correct. Have rallied back to win this game in the final seconds here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. How about that? The guy that you think is going to crash the board, he's the one that actually got the basketball in position to score, and he got a really good look. Well, this was a pivotal weekend for Sunbelt Conference play. Again, these two teams will do battle again tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock. As the officials take a second look at how much time they're going to add to the clock. My guess is going to be about a second and a half. Forrest is going to shoot the one and one for Appalachian State. So will there be enough time if he misses, John, for a rebound oh, and a, a long a throw, a half a second? Well, if I'm if I'm Coach Kearns, I'm telling I'm telling uh, Justin Forrest. Well, are they're not in the two shot foul. Yeah, I'm telling him just miss the free throw. There's no way they can get an offense. There's no way they can get a rebound and make a shot from underneath that basket. I'm not saying there's not a way, but I, I'm telling Justin Forrest now he's got to make sure he hits the rim. And the officials. Was that the 10th foul? Maybe that's what they're saying. Yep, they're saying that was the 10th team foul. So he's going to have two here. So they had it as nine team fouls on the clock. And then a reminder that was the 10th team foul. So there will be two shots. So make this first one, and I'm telling them to miss the second one. And he rattles in the first. And there's nothing if he misses this free throw. As long as it hits the rim, there's nothing Georgia Southern can do besides rebound and throw it to the other end of the court. And he makes them both. See, now you got a chance for a catch in a, in a shot from half court, although it's still nearly impossible to pull off. The heave, it was blocked by Forrest. And Dustin Kearns' group rallies from 16 points down to go to 2-1 and one in the Sun Belt Conference. Wow, is that a comeback by the Mountaineers? And it, it all started with defense, Kendall. They got the stops when they needed it and some timely shooting from Justin Forrest. And Michael Almonese got him back in this game. App State utilizes a 7-0 run over the final three minutes and 14 seconds to win this ball game. Two and one of the Sun Belt are the Mountaineers. The final score is 66-63. Michael Almonese was huge down the stretch for Appalachian State, finishing with 14 points. And James Lewis Jr., 12 points and six rebounds today pulled the Mountaineers through. Give Georgia Southern some credit though. Extremely good defensive team and these two teams are going to do it again tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock. Should be interesting to see the type of adjustments that are made. Well we're going to have a good one tomorrow and I think it's going to be another slugfest candle. I mean like I said there's a lot of familiarity between these two programs um, and, and you know the competitiveness because of, of the rivalry. It's just going to be another great ball game tomorrow. Once again, final score 66-63 for Kendall Lewis alongside my partner John Reister and the rest of our production crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN to view this game in its entirety and other games streaming on the ESPN family of networks. Be sure to visit ESPN.com or the ESPN app. Once again, we say so long from Boone, North Carolina. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on ESPN+. Plus.